For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tuvalu is an atoll, it doesn't have any mountains. Um, you travel from one end to the other, and on the mainland it takes you 30 minutes, it's pretty small. Uh, so since it's a uh, low land ground, uh, Tuvalu has been affecting uh, by the sea level rise. Every day we see uh, climate change. Uh, the sea will come underneath our land and fill up uh, our roads, uh, sometimes our homes every day uh, when the sea uh, uh, gets high tide. And uh, during one of these uh, cyclone, uh, I believe it's cyclo Cyclone Pam or Cyclone Tino, it uh, hit Tobago really bad, uh, one of our islands. Uh, so there were uh, like uh, graveyards near the beach coast and the waves would come and dug all the graveyards and all the the bones of my ancestors uh, came up and it was really uh, frightening. Uh, and we are living in the presence of climate change. It just seemed like every single year, like those floods were just happening. Like it was just a thing that, that was just normal. I mean, but now that I think about looking back and, you know, having a bit more, you know, familiarized myself with more of the climate science and all of those kinds of things now, these typhoons, and these floods, which should be like once every 100 years, are not happening every 10, every 5. Um, and from, from since 2008, we've had, like, for example, Typhoon Milanda, whose anniversary is actually today. Um, I mean, it's the, eighth, it's the eighth anniversary of Typhoon Milanda, which claimed over 6,000 lives in the Philippines. That was in 2013. Um, then we had, of course, last year, two of the costliest typhoons ever in the Philippines all the massive floods that were stayed in the country, but... Um, most of us depend on the economic value of getting fish for fishing. There's also the navigation aspect, the transportation of food from one point to another, because of course it's an island, you have to navigate from that place to the city. So um, we've been having some problems with the uh, high levels of Lake Victoria. The, the water levels of Lake Victoria has been increasing, making the water levels in Lake Victoria from Uganda and Tanzania being, uh, you know, uh, a little bit drop, dropping. So back in my place, we've been having floods, more often floods, that has led to more destruction of homes. And since us, we believe in having these permanent houses, we've been having such, you know, some bad t and tough times. I always think there are differences between developed countries and underdeveloped countries, uh, climate fight. Because we, are, we belong to such area that nobody knows us. Neither the world never speak about us. I always feel we are ignored people. As I mentioned before, we are ignored people. We are not in the line of those people we are world is discussing, we are world is addressing. I never saw any person, anyone speaking about us. This made me think about this. Then I thought, whatever, I need to go in front of the world. I need to achieve international platform to address that. We are already such people. I was able to stumble upon this picture or this like graph, of, like it was a map of the Philippines, uh, of the capital city, um, and then it was saying which parts of the capital city would be underwater by 2050, within my lifetime, of course. Um, and then I was I, I was looking at it, and then I realized the medical school where I was studying was going to be underwater, 
It made me think, what am I even doing? Why was I even studying to become a doctor in the hospitals I was going to work in with the underwater? So that really just made me think for a while. And then after a few months of really thinking about it, I decided to just drop medical school and do this full time because I realized, like, I, I, I've always thought about this way, like, what's the point of healing people if you're just going to send them back into the conditions that will end up killing them, right? I mean, if you're going to treat people for the heat waves or for flood-related diseases, and then you're just going to send them back into a world where that's just going to keep happening. Like, and that's the thing about things like the climate crisis. It's not just about the, the lives lost immediately when it comes to the floods. It's not just about the lives lost or the lives directly impacted by the drought. It's also about how things like nutrition, things like diseases, things like all these kinds of health-related problems and all so much more are impacted downstream by the climate impacts. And that's what we also need to realize that it's, again, not just about carbon emissions or these extreme weather events, but the slow onset social impacts of the climate crisis. And that's what we also need to talk about. The time of warning for Tuvalu is over, it, I believe, and I want uh, for us to act now. I want, I'm glad that I came. I'm the only activist, from uh, youth activist from Tuvalu that was able to come. Uh, my country is on lockdown and uh, it's really hard for me to, to get here. It takes me three days, so I'm still a little bit of jet lag. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I came here to try to give the message and support my brothers and sisters to, because together we can, uh, as young people together, we can raise up our voices so that the leaders out there can hear um, uh, our message. Uh, I didn't come here to show you that how pity we are, but I came here for us to work together. as Because this is our world, and as youth, the future, we will be leading the future. And I don't want my culture to be, to disappear. I want to stay in my country to sustain my language, my culture, and uh, everything. The climate crisis that is caused by this capitalist, capitalist system of um, over-exploitation, over-extraction from the environment has destroyed, destroyed the lives and dreams of the youth. And it's, it's clear with everybody who just spoke that it is destroying, it is changing people's lives and again, taking away the dreams that but we were promised essentially a future of a world where we can live and breathe and have do what we want, but it's not happening because of all, all of this mess. And that's just something we always have to consider that in particular order as youth, like we have been robbed of a life. And that's just something that we have to take back. And it's a shame we have to fight. It's, it's, it's a tragedy we have to fight just to be able to enjoy life you know, in the next few decades and have a reasonable or like a, you know, yeah, just, just, just be alive. But that's what we're doing here right now. We're, we're taking it back from the people who stole it from us.